Welcome to today's program, Art of Wildlife Photography. The Association of Lifelong Learners is an organization that believes from your first breath to, I'll let you fill in the blank, that we should be very much involved in learning and finding out new things. We are located, our offices are located at the Briggs Center on the Alpena Community Camp, Community College campus, but you will hardly ever find us there. You'll find us kayaking, hiking, playing cards, maybe at dinner in Osamik. For instance, look at this. Look at this calendar of events. And if you can see the circle green ones, that is one of the thing, many things that the lifelong learners participate in. Plus this program, 10 full pages, 10 full pages of programs that the lifelong learners do. Today, we are privileged to have with us Jeff Fairchild, who is going to tell us all about his photography and how he manages to capture wonderful pictures of wildlife. Jeff has been involved in photography for over 20 years. He's an award-winning photographer and he has had three of his photos chosen for the 2021 PBS Nature Calendar. After years away in Indiana and other places, maybe, uh, Jeff returned home to Alpena in the fall of 2021. He is excited about the growth of the art culture in Alpena and is very pleased to be a part of it. Jeff, would you start by telling us all about the equipment that you use? I will. We'll be going across the hall. We, yes, Dick reminded me that we will be going across the hall at some time to view his photos as well as see his equipment here. All right. Um, photo equipment. I would. Uh, I would definitely start with a, a bag because. Why did you look at me when you said that? <laughs> Do you want to hold it? <laughs> Get caught holding the bag. <laughs> uh, the the carrying case for the camera is uh, actually a, a huge thing to factor when you're thinking about your equipment because this is something that's going to carry that investment, especially as a wildlife photographer and a number of different situations um and not only wildlife at times i i in shooting athletics or even doing a, a portrait session where you're following somebody all over the place your stuff is jumbled so a, a bag of course you're it doesn't seem like anything drastic to someone who might not know any different but the, the padding of a bag means a lot um you want to make sure that the locations that are going to secure this are secure. In fact, I uh, have seen some uh, different carrying cases that might just have a plastic snap or something uh, similar to what Dick has got there uh, that come free with cases or free with camera packages. And as much as it seems like a good idea at the time, uh, all you have to do is drop open a bag and have about five thousand dollars hit the ground and you'll realize that that hundred dollar bag all of a sudden really didn't uh seem so expensive but uh and you want something that has ample space because uh, if i was doing something like a wedding or something you have uh, sd cards that go into different slots uh, this particular unit only has one slot for a card um, and like i was saying in, in the event of a wedding or something you certainly don't want to have all your exposures wrapped up on one card because if you lose it it's gone so whenever i'm doing something uh like a wedding for example i'll have two three different cameras and included in that lot would be at least two cameras that have dual slots. So I'm doing a backup. So if something goes wrong with one, then the other is going to cover it. 
uh, you might divide sections of a chute into two, three different sections so that you can pull cards and have cards put aside. So once again, you're just, you know, double checking and covering yourself because the first things that happen at situations are the first things that happen and they're not going to happen again. You just can do your best to recreate them, but, but they're gone. Uh, but like I was saying, a bag should have its carrying spaces for anything you might need. Uh, this particular one even has, you know, you have things like a, a drink holder on the side. You have places where you can mount uh, a fold-up tripod. Things that separate compartments, keeping things like your deflectors put in. You can have flashes. Uh, but just a number of things. This Jeff, one too. Jeff, how many cameras do you usually take with you when you go out on a shoot? Um, it depends on what I'm shooting. Like I said, if it's, you know, if I was doing a wedding, I would have at least three cameras with me and, you know, two, three, four lenses, depending on the setup. There's a shorter lens that will, you know, keep your exposures, you know, fairly close to you. But then on the other hand, I have lenses that are a foot long. And then I get into my wildlife ones that are foot and a half long. Um, okay. So it, it really depends. When I'm shooting wildlife, I typically will have uh, a camera body with the longer. This particular lens right here is just a 24 to 70 millimeter. Uh, at 70 millimeters, I'm pretty comfortable shooting stuff. I don't know, probably within, you know, five to 50 feet. When I get into uh, this being the 70, I might get into a, a 200 millimeter, which could be good for something like uh, athletics. Uh, a lot of people will use a 200 millimeter. Uh, 2.8 aperture for low light situations. This still gives you a little reach in the process. Um, okay. But yeah. um, you mentioned shooting weddings. Do you find brides or wildlife more cooperative? Uh, definitely wildlife. Yeah. Okay. That's what yeah. I was well, wondering. Uh, but wildlife can be uh, it can be a challenge too. And, you know, they usually mate for life. So it just makes it easier if you want to go back and recreate something. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, uh, Jeff, what kind of camera body are you using there? Uh, this one right here is a Nikon Z6. Um, just, uh, it's a few years old. This is Nikon's take on the new uh, mirrorless cameras that, are especially good for low light situations in the case of could be anything if i'm trying to shoot uh something in the evening or in the morning in a low light situation this one will give me capabilities to crank up the iso uh, which is a factor in getting your final exposures and it, it just a good all around camera. Okay, now I'm a real camera ignorant. So I'm gonna ask a dumb question here. You mentioned that camera, this camera is mirrorless. Does that mean that some cameras have mirrors in them? They do. And why? Uh, well, the mirror on some actually, uh, I'll show this a little closer here for you. This is a mirrorless camera. As you can see here, usually a camera will have a mirror that will come down that will reflect that image onto the sensor. Uh, in this case, there is no mirror. So it just, it helps in the process of gathering more light. Is it, it makes it easier to gather light? Mm-hmm. Better technology is new technology, Dick? Is that what you're trying to say? It is, and this one being a few years old, there's actually one that came out in, in about the past year that Nikon has that's, uh, it's called the Z7 II, and that's 
at the top of my wish list in case anybody wanted to know. Uh, <laughs> you write that down. Okay. Uh, but still, yeah. What? Okay. Uh, is, have we gone through your bag now? Uh, pretty much so, yeah. Right. Um, and another thing, I, one thing I would add, what do I use for? Africa, for shooting wildlife there. Uh, I would, my standard equipment, uh, I would take. Would you use like a 70 to 300 or a 100 to 400? I actually have a couple 500s and that's exactly what I would do. I have uh, different friends who, who do the African thing. I have associates, you know, through Instagram and Facebook who are actual National Geographic photographers and you know the things they bring in uh, 500 millimeter that I have actually a two to 500 uh, it might be a, a $1,500 lens but the lens that the big boys are using is a 800 millimeter lens at 2.8 aperture and that runs about 13 grand okay I love it when you guys talk dirty but what the heck are you saying when you say a 500 or 400? What, what do you mean? That's the, the millimeters and, and of exposure. What does that mean? That's, you really be basic with me. Um, what do you have right now? Right now, this is a, a 24 to 70 okay. with the aperture. Like a 28 to 300. Nice. Nice. And why do you do that? Um, because it gives me the range of getting close up, but far at the same time. Okay. Does that make sense to you? It makes perfect sense. That's not a cheap lens. Okay. What's the how aperture about, on that one? How about we go into something that maybe I know a little bit about and we'll go look at some of your pictures and you guys can have a technical discussion when we're done. Well, I love this picture. It sort of looks familiar. Can you tell us about it from beginning to end? From how did you do this? Uh, this particular picture is as shot from off of the bridge on Ninth Street, uh, right by the dam, sitting up here. And this was a couple of years ago. I was on vacation, and I, I just always loved the dam and the bridge because um, even as a little kid this was one of my favorite spots to go fish long before there were boardwalks and everything else that they have now that have made it even a more special place but I, I was sitting around with some buddies that particular night and the lights were just setting up right falling uh, ordered a pizza had it delivered up on the bridge just uh, one of those nights and we're fishing and it just lined up by the time i got it home what kind of camera did you have that night uh, i probably had, had the mirrorless camera that we were stuff. just looking at okay. for this kind of shot okay. because i'm trying to get uh more light in while maintaining uh the details of the picture and everything that i wanted to enunciate with this um the cool thing about this picture that the untrained eye wouldn't see that I don't know that I didn't want to fix because it has special meaning is there's a couple lines through it. And that's actually from fishing poles hanging off the side of the bridge. And you can see the fishing lines to me that just added a special touch. And even in fact, someday I've thought about taking this photo and actually creating a, uh, a 3d ish image where I could put it in a shadow box or something and even have uh, portion of reenact the bridge on the front and have actual line coming down into these positions. Uh, just how many shots do you remember approximately? How many shots would you have to get to get this particular photo? If, if I'm doing something like that, I'll probably pop off 10, 15 shots and just, you know, see what feels like. Then you took the back put it in your computer and did you have to do anything else then? Oh, absolutely, yeah. This one was kind of far from the picture, the different things that people can do when they get into 
their programs, like a, a Photoshop or a light room. And even with those programs, there's add-ons that you put into the factor that it's a, it, it's a creative process. Some people don't understand uh, the filters that the photographers was to use that time to make a, an artistic statement. It's, it's a lot different than the filters that some of these people try to put on their faces so they look 20 years younger. And okay, they, you okay, know, yeah. You're looking stuff and you know something's going on. Uh, and some people, the, the purest of photography, at times don't like it because they want to see the raw natural shot. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, I, I'm with Ansel. And it's a lab, you know, I mean, the shot is just the beginning of it for me, of the creative process, because once the shot is home, then you have to figure out how to crop, which one feels right, and then you go through a number of different processes. So, Sometimes you will work the process to the point where you have to backtrack, because you've overdone it. So, so that's you know, where your art comes in. Absolutely. It's not just pushing a button on the camera. This is where the artist in you really comes forward. Right. I mean, you, you start looking at the uh, Change your plate. Jerry's back with, with the eagle. Uh, this eagle was actually this spring um, at a place that many of us now call Squaw Bay for now. Uh, but there was just so much going on at Squaw Bay this year uh, with the birds that come through the migration. Um, and this eagle is actually of the pair that so many people know on Squaw Bay and that have been there for, for years. And it was just, it was a perfect morning, but it, there was really nothing. It wasn't a sunset sunrise kind of thing, but it just happened to land in the right spot at the right time. And, and I got the shot and this is like you're saying, Linda, this is another one of those cases where I take a normal photograph. And if I want to add, a feeling to it at times you can add things that make this look like a textured uh painted picture so this isn't sky this wasn't there or water originally this is something that you did right yeah I, yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay. um but but yeah I, it, like i said it would have been a beautiful shot even without that but the the fun part is that i can if i want to i could find this image in the you know one of the three external hard drives that I have that have probably a million pictures on them and, and do the original. Um, How close were you to, to this bird? That's a good thing to ask Linda, because a lot of people see a lot of these pictures that are taken that look like I'm standing five feet from the thing. Again, this is going back to what we talked about with that 500 millimeter lens. Okay. And when I'm using a 500 millimeter lens, um, I love my D500 from Nikon because it's great for snapping onto a subject and following it and keeping the focus points that I want to keep. Um, and even a 500 millimeter on a crop sensor, the sensor is what we talked about. I'm gaining another 20% uh, in the range. So this 500 millimeter actually becomes a 700 millimeter lens at that point. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm, but back to your question, I was probably a couple hundred feet, if not more from okay. this Eagle on the pulled off on the side of the road, you know, sneaking around and. Okay. So you weren't in a boat or anything, but you were just walking around and, and saw the Eagle. There's a, yeah, there's a parking spot out there on the Bay where people can pull okay. in and, you know, I mean, not a great place to walk around because the traffic out there is crazy, but you know, yeah. it, Try to be keep, careful. You keep nodding. I take it that you're with him on a lot of these shoots. Yeah, okay. Anything else on this one? And I'll move us to the, the dragonfly. No. But I'm going to ask Ron, can you get that off the wall and bring that over, that dragonfly head? The big one. Yep, that's it. Because I don't want Dick to have to move his camera all over. And here comes Ron with my favorite. I don't know if this is wildlife, but it's wildlife to me. But this is my favorite. I've seen a lot of dragonflies, but I never got this up close and personal. Am I holding? Yeah, hold it for me. Of 
Okay, tell me, tell me from start to finish, because this is so favorite of mine. Tell me, tell me what you were doing and how you found this honey. This dragonfly is one that I shot before I moved up here. Um, in northeastern Indiana, there is a uh, a little nature preserve. It's the Pigeon River Nature Preserve, and it was about 10 miles from where I lived, but it was the kind of place that had just enough solitude at times that I could go in and explore, and it reminded me of Pina. You know, or homesick. Oh, all the time. <laughs> Every time I left, I was homesick. But it, at this preserve, I mean, there was just so many different things to explore. It's like, oh my goodness, I want to say it's like 50,000 acres or some ridiculousness like that. So did this guy just come up and say, hey, Jeff, take my picture? Um, Not in so many words, but uh, you might as well say it did because once I found it, it continued to come back to the same spot. Camera hog. Absolutely. Dragonflies okay. are... I, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. People see the dragonflies and a lot of people, I, I think because they don't actually take the half a second to realize what's actually going on, but dragonflies are extremely curious little critters. Um, but this one was, we were cruising up one of our little side roads. Uh, I think that day we might have had hummingbird moths on the agenda, but whenever I'm out exploring, it's not about, I've learned along the way that it's not about a particular subject, because if you're rushing to get to a subject, that's when you miss something or you're not prepared. Um, so again, my favorite question, how close were you? Eyeball this one? Eyeball? Eh. Probably 15 feet. Okay. And how did you decide which part of him to capture? And did you what did you do when you got back to do your artistry on that photo? Well, on something like this, I probably got home and I did the whole, you know, the whole body on it. But then when I wanted to go a step further, as far as bringing up the image in size and detail, I decided to go with this particular stance and it just felt right and i love the detail and i love the feelings that came through in the and the colors and the expressions and and most expression? people you think this guy has an expression that's so wonderful wow yeah i i get him uh smile in fact this morning i was out and for the first time ever i people will see it later but i have one that has one leg in front and one in back. So it actually looks like it's given a bow. So cute. I've got them where they're smiling, turning their head. Uh, at times, they, I mean, they just make you feel very weird because if you're paying attention, you'll get facial expressions and you'll swear somebody from your past is trying to talk to you. <laughs> is there another photo here that you would particularly like to tell us about that's one of your favorites? I have gathered, um, you call this your art of photography. I have gathered while you're looking that you don't consider yourself a photographer. You consider yourself an artist. Would that be correct or not? I don't know about that. I mean, because if you want to do art with images involved, you would certainly have to have the aspects of photography down good enough that you could have a starting point oh, to get into the artistic aspects. What about this this guy right here? He's up close and personal. We need to get him so that those I think I home... have a, let me grab this shot over here. And here comes our girl. Okay, the frog. This is a great story too. You're gonna love this, Linda. Okay. Actually, on this day, we were parked down. We were back in the nature preserve in Indiana, and we were by. Uh, there's a little dam there that we used to go to, and 
I'm just it, once again, exploring, trying to figure out some stuff, find something that caught my eye. And that frog was sitting there and I got back to the car and Jen was still sitting there. So I showed her the picture and she was like, what's that on its eye? Yeah. I, I hadn't even noticed it at first, but there was actually a dragonfly nymph on this thing's eye sitting there. And I just, it just, that had to be a picture. That was something that had to be printed. So this one I actually call eye candy for obvious reasons, because he's got his little uh, meal to go. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Again, how close were you? What kind of land? This one I was where? probably at about, uh, you know, 10 feet, but I probably actually had on the 500 millimeter lens. So zoom in wasn't a real problem at all. This is just fascinating to me how you can see every little, what I would call them hairs, but I don't think they're hairs on that no, that, thing, that's, are they? No, that's, that's the actual body structure that you're seeing there. Okay, and then these, these yellow... Legs. Oh, those are legs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. Now, let me tell a little bit about Jeff and where your studio is. Would you get the photo uh, of the woman over there that always reminds me of Marilyn Monroe? Mm. Jeff's studio is in the center number. Is this number one building? That's called, I would call it the old Montgomery Wards, but I don't think any of you are as old as I am. So it's the center building. And he's on the lower level. All of these photos, these wonderful photos are framed and marvelous and ready to go should you be interested. I love this picture and I love the story behind it. So tell us. Uh, this is actually uh jen and i's niece who got married last fall um and we were moving so we couldn't get you know involved in shooting a whole wedding or anything like that and they understood this that is the bride? this is the bride this is one of the things that wildlife is more cooperative than okay yes <laughs> <laughs> but i it one of the cool things about not shooting the wedding that particular day was the fact that I didn't have all the pressures on me that the photographer would have to keep up with. So I could kind of sit back and watch everything as it came to fruition. And in this particular case, the photographer was working with her and some of the people of the wedding. And she actually went to call the kids. And for some reason, I pop the shot and at times in photography, you're able to just look at your monitor and immediately, you know, you hit the jackpot. And when this shot came together, I knew that it was going to be something special because this young lady, I mean, she already does, you know, some modeling and stuff. And she's just, she's, she's a beautiful young lady inside out. And it, it just wasn't hard to make it a great shot. I, I just did a little bit in the tinting here because uh, a lot of times a, a more monotone approach adds expression. Uh, and especially in wildlife that can happen too at times. Uh, but but yeah. I, I, I love the way the light comes down. Now, did you enhance this to get the light to be like that? A little bit. You know, bringing in lights at different angles and, and you work with uh, the highlights and the shadows that are involved when you're looking at something like this. You have to figure out the points that you um, that you really want to enunciate. You know, I, the, the hands are coming through and the face glow. Uh, she's even got the, the scripture on her arm. So everything just came together. Her, her hand is so clear, you could tell her fortune if you were a fortune teller by that red hand. This is it, that looks like a good fortune, too, and a good it call. It does, it does. Thank you. Um, is there any other photos that you would like to share with us? Any questions? One of the more famous ones locally, there's no owl on Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A local famous picture? Yeah. Great. Yeah, this winter, a lot of people will oh, remember my. we had uh, a snowy owl that was right in the middle of town. And uh, people who were fortunate enough to catch it at times 
actually caught this. This is Ann Gildner's sculpture called uh, Departure. So with this owl landed on there, when I put the two of them, I didn't put the two of them together. They were like that, but yeah, just to uh, show some love for Ann's sculpture, I call this one Snowy Departure. Uh, so it covers the snowy and it, and it gives Anne credit for her beautiful piece of work there. Um, but, and again, I would bring out the fact that, you know, I have the equipment so I can shoot something. When I was shooting this, some people probably saw the crazy guy on the side of the road with a huge lens and the white camouflage on because I respect this creature and I, I don't want it to be afraid to come back. If you stress animals, they won't eat, they'll die. Uh, some people just don't realize this. This one was smart enough that it actually took off from the main road there up uh, by the bridge on Chisholm and went more in back of the college and the museum area and, and found places where it could get some refuge without the, you know, constant harassment of people jumping out of their cars and running at it. Did, what, did you enhance this in any way when you got it back home? How big was the original picture? How many of these did you take to get this perfect one? You don't uh, know. On, uh, you know, on, on this one, I, I bet I took at least a hundred photos that day. And, and there's a few, uh, few different takes that were actually made on that one. Um, this one is hard to see, but this actually has the, uh, all as it took off in flight. See that, Linda? Oh, isn't that amazing? Yes. Wow. Yes. Mm. But yeah, again, with ant sculpture, it just a lot of people who see this. Hmm? Yeah. But uh, again, like I said, it has Anne's beautiful sculpture and it was taken off in flight. And, you know, action photos are. They're always cool if you catch them right. Happen to be lucky enough to catch them. Um, but yeah, uh, and as far as the enhancements that you were referring to, Linda, on this one, I, I really didn't have to do much at all because uh, the lights were coming through right. If anything, um, I, I might have just done something to bring out some of the background colors a little bit so that it would help this owl to stand out a little better. Uh, even Anne said in the shots that she's seen of her sculpture, nothing ever captured uh, all the little details. I was thinking you can see almost all the feathers. Yeah. Like, there's, you would think would be feathers on I mean, Anne just, she was amazing in this. And people who really take a close look at the sculpture sometime will see what really goes into making a, an amazing sculpture. She nailed it. Thanks for bringing that to our attention, Dick. You got another question for us? Okay, that's an on away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and Anne is in fact inviting me out to check that out sometime. I I did a lot of welding in my years, so I look forward to getting a chance to uh, getting out, meeting her, and. Yeah, and she actually runs, uh, yeah, does some classes with people and everything to who might be interested in sculpting as a career or even a side hobby. Ron, Gail, any questions? Any particular picture that you wanted to talk about? Yes. Okay, Ron's gonna bring us hmm. his picture. Carefully coming, okay. And I bet I know why Ron likes this one. Here we go. Tell us all about this one, Jeff. Again, uh, great blue heron um, that can be found, uh, you know, anywhere throughout Michigan, Indiana, and in a lot of places throughout the United States. Um, Where was this particular one? That one was at, uh, at the Mongo at the park in Indiana once again. Okay. And whether you're watching herons or cranes or anything, um, 
you've seen them before where they make the stance all of a sudden the neck is straight up you see the head turning so i mean if you're a photographer who knows knows the signs you know that it's about to be action jackson time <laughs> and you know and then the head swoops down and and in something a shot like this uh that camera of mine i can set it so that it takes 12 frames per second so when i know a shot like this was about to happen i just get the focus and lay into the trigger and for one shot within a two three seconds i might have 40 50 pictures through the whole process and then i just pick out which one you know what's the money shot <laughs> what is this fish run what caught my attention was the water drops coming off the fish. Oh, okay. Very to, nice. I tried to do that. I can't it. Well, you need one of those. Takes takes forty pictures in a second or something to get the water drops. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. And this, I take it, was really water. You didn't enhance that at all, like you no, did the, the owl. Water. Right? It's a pretty natural shot. If if anything, I would just do the fine tuning to bring out. Uh, some of the characteristics, you know, like making sure you got a good focus in the eye, uh, the scales on the little fish. I mean, you can even see the eye on the little fish. Yeah. And, and, and like Ron was saying here, water droplets, you know, whether you're shooting something that's just been pulled out of the water or you're shooting uh, waterfowl that might be hitting the water, the, the water that splashes and moves just all adds to the final composition of the shot and shows without words, the the emotions that are being expressed through what you're trying to convey with your picture. You know a lot about wildlife. Which came first, your love of wildlife or, or your love of photography? You know, I thought about that question when, you, when I saw it on your list and, and it's really, it would be hard to, hard to call. Um, thinking back, it would put me at uh, a little Fisher Price camera uh, that I popped and my little ring went around on the top. But in the other hand, I would have my Viewmaster with the pictures in it, you know? Okay. So, I mean, okay. they were hand in hand. <laughs> uh, you know, my, my dad always took me out in growing up in Alpena, we were always out in back of the cement plant or we were heading to Sault Ste. Marie to track down a, a possible sighting of hawk owls or some other uh, thing that he might have, you know, heard about through the Audubon Society and such. But I just, yeah, nature is my my getaway. I mean, it, it is for anybody. You can certainly tell how much you love it. I we we're not filling the entire hour, but I I'm through. I can't think of another question. All my list of questions. Did you get your whole question? Yes, he has. So, um, so that's why I'm looking to you guys. I, I would sure you have some. Might do something on that portrait thing. We did that. I mean the the big one. Well, no, the other. Oh, okay. Go go help us out quick... here, Jeff. Yeah. Here he comes with. Mm -hmm. We should have um, music. I, you know, I can even do this one. Okay, great. Um, speaking of wildlife, Linda, I, I bring it back to our kids. And uh, another thing that I really enjoy doing is is working with young people, whether it's uh, athletics or senior pictures. Well, now you're taking wildlife and kids and, and making them equal. You didn't like the wildlife and the brides. So Absolutely. The no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, my, our boy, uh, was a football player and is in fact a collegiate athlete for track, you know, so they were, they were animals, but <laughs> I, you know, you, you just gotta, you gotta learn how to feed them and, yeah, exactly. you know, so and it all works out in the wild end. Wild absolutely but uh that is something else i enjoy is uh family portraits and and senior pictures and stuff like that and, and it also gives me the opportunity to have different expressions of even a normal photo where you can see stuff like uh you know you can kind of tell where 
this young man here doing the shot put action shot yeah. action shots and then by just adding bringing out colors or doing different things uh something i always included in my packages with my seniors was a a free collage or an artistic rendition of a picture so that you know they have something special to look back on years to come or i've taken uh like two three pictures and made collage posters that can be put on something like foam board and okay, you know okay. stuff they'll have forever okay thank you for so, that thank you thanks linda Jeannie, any questions yeah yep uh You know, I, I can't spend enough time on the river. That river is, it's so much more than a river. It's everything I remember as a kid. You know, I couldn't wait to get out of school and jump on my bike and cruise the river or hit the dam or, or do something like that. So, you know, most certainly the river. I, I don't think there's a river that runs through a town in Alpena. There's, there's a river that lets a town run through it. <laughs> And, and I love what what we do as a community to have our reservations and have places that are set aside so that these, you know, wonderful creations can have some kind of, uh, you know, place to go where there's a refuge. Okay. That's only one. That's only one. That's right. One. Um, and most recently, a lot of people heard about the sinkhole out on El Kajan, you know, I mean, it's really no big deal, but the entire area out there on Misery Bay is just phenomenal. I mean, you can see eagles and osprey and the, every wildflower you ever want to see at the right time of year is there and it's quiet and yeah, just a good place to get out and clear your head for a minute and breathe some good air long as the wind's blowing the white way and you don't catch the plant but you know that's that's just part of what we that's we have here at home roll, oh right? I, absolutely no i love the smell of abitibi that's the <laughs> first thing i always look for when i got home eh? you know if the smell's not there it just and ain't you, right and you <laughs> can't explain it to anybody else you can't you know if you don't like the smell you should move <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much jeff I encourage everybody to come down and see Jeff and his wonderful wildlife photography photos and they're wonderful framed and I can't thank you enough for spending your time with us. Thanks for thank being you. here. Thanks, Dad. <laughs>